The second O is omnipresence. I'm clutching at straws here for things beginning with O. Um, but, it's, but it's actually kind of true. It works out in the end, I promise. Millions of people visit BBC Co UK, but plenty, plenty of people, lots and lots, millions and millions, don't. It's very important that the BBC is, doesn't get too precious about where it publishes, that, that BBC Co UK isn't the be-all and end-all of, of the BBC online. And the best example of this by far in recent times has been the Cycling the Americas project, which some of you may have seen on BBC One, uh, where Mark Beaumont, the prolific cycler, uh, who beat the world record for cycling around the world, uh, undertook an ex expedition from uh, Alaska all the way down to the bottom of Chile, cycling and climbing a couple of mountains along the way. It was a terrific expedition uh, where Again, what usually would have happened with the BBC, we sent this guy off, gone to, you know, taken a, a, a TV team with him, gone and filmed him a couple of times, and uh, shown off a TV show at the end of it. Great. You get a brilliant TV show at the end of it, and it's, you know, it's, it's classic what the BBC does best. Um, but we realise as well that, that actually we can grow that TV audience by getting people interested in it beforehand. But it's not, and again, but it's not just about advertising. It's not just about marketing. This is about how people want to interact with things that are going on around them. So look at this beautiful thing here, these crazy arrows. What we did for the entire duration of Mark's journey is, uh, is publish stuff all along the way in areas where we knew people would be, in areas where we knew people had a level of interest already. We know that, that uh, Mark had a Mark had a presence in the world anyway. He was you know, just what, beating the world record. People have read some news stories about him. If he starts tweeting about his journey, then people are going to follow him, and they did. And, you know, the, the amount of people following him grew and grew and grew over the journey, and it, it became a very active community of people uh, enjoying what he was doing, answering his questions or him answering their questions, a proper conversation all the way through, meant that what is actually a very, very lonely journey for someone, I can't even imagine cycling that far and just you know, being on my own cycling every day, hundreds of miles, um, became, you know, these people became his family for the journey. Publishing pictures on Flickr as he went along, he took with him a very lightweight laptop and a, and a satellite phone thing, uh, and it meant that every so often he could upload a photograph as he went along. What this meant, uh, along with that, there was, a, there was a, a blog at the BBC where we'd do some slightly more in-depth features. We'd aggregate it all on, on friend feed, <laughs> pipe it all through Facebook. All of these, these things that actually become uh, fairly straightforward uh, computery things. You set them up once, and then it all just pipes through. You allow people to have conversations themselves in these spaces where they're most comfortable. If people were most comfortable on friend feed, then they could have a conversation there. If they're more comfortable on Facebook, they could have the conversation there. All we were doing was, was facilitating that. It's not about us dictating what the conversations are. It's about facilitating them where they, where they are most likely to happen. And so actually, what transpired was, at the end of it, you didn't necessarily need the TV show. Uh, of course, the TV show was, was a brilliant thing and added enormous value to the project. But actually, the guy cycling and having this conversation along the way, delighting the audience, which is one of those classic BBC things, of delighting the audience every step of the way, is, you know, it was, it was a, a uniquely a brilliant experience in its own right. One of, those, one of those things that actually it didn't need the BBC to do. Anyone could have done this. And people are doing it all the time. People now who cycle around the world to undertake these endeavours that, that normal, regular, everyday people don't do. They can communicate with people. People can feel like they're on the journey with them. It's a, it, an incredibly rewarding thing. Uh, the third of these things is openness. <laughs> uh, touched on that a little bit before. The web was designed as a collaborative medium and we've no reason to keep the public out. There is... I suppose, it, particularly for people of an older generation, people who are stuck in the ways of broadcasting, again, talking specifically about the BBC here, people stuck in the ways of broadcasting, um, they think, well, I'm, you know, I'm spending money here, I'm creating something, it's mine, or it belongs to the BBC. Actually, if someone, someone pinches it, they're wrong. If someone's um, taking my content and doing something else with it, then it's... it's it's, it's not right. This thing is, this is a be beautiful, unique snowflake. And if you, if you dare touch it, then 
you're ruining what is my life's work. Uh, don't be so bloody precious. Right? It's completely ridiculous. A lot of this stems from technology. Uh, you can see here some, some you know, very, very basic things that the BBC does, as, as do a lot of other uh, websites, uh, making things bookmarkable, making things shareable, uh, producing RSS feeds, allowing people to embed video on, uh, on other websites, all this sort of stuff where we say, actually, we've created this thing, but it would, it would be very useful to us. We would gain some benefit from it, uh, and you would gain some benefit from it if we said, please, you, you, know, you paid for the creation of this stuff. Use it in a way that you see fit. Because the likelihood is that people gen you know, generally make stuff better when they add to it. You know, you take a, uh, the best example, I suppose, is someone taking a, a feed of BBC news stories and sticking them on a map. Nowhere on BBC Co UK slash news do you get a map with little pins and pinpoints in it saying this is where the news is happening. But the information is available. You know, you can, you can run a, a computer algorithm over the text of the, of the story, find, you know, figure out to a reasonable degree of accuracy where that story is taking place, stick them all on the map. Suddenly you've got a brand new interface into content that's ready prepared for you. That level of openness is not about the specific applications of it. It's about understanding that is there, is there more value to you letting your content out into the world, letting what you, what you manufacture, what you make out into the, into the world than there is of protecting it. There are always risks with opening it up, but are they outweighed by the value that it could return to you? Another example um, is BBC Music. What you can see at the, at the, at the bottom there, is this, is a, this is the BBC Music page for Cheryl Cole. Uh, I don't know why I picked this one. But <laughs> What it, what it does is it, is it aggregates every, every video published of Cheryl Cole from around the BBC. So any part of, the, of this giant organization that publishes something about Cheryl Cole aggregates onto this one page, whether it's a blog post, whether it's a video, some sort of re reference in a news story, anything, all gets aggregated here. And all that information is then uh, published in computer-readable formats that, that other people outside of the BBC can then use to make their own stuff. It's like, the idea is, we've got all this stuff, why, why not share it? It's, it's, a, it's a question of reasoning. Why, you, you've got to have a good reason these days not to share this sort of stuff. People want to use it, it's, and it does the BBC proud, I think, by letting this, letting this out into the open. But the best example of all of this by far, um, in my opinion anyway, is something that BBC Scotland did called Island Blogging many, many years ago, about 2002, I think it started, 2003, where there was a, we, we needed to, well, we had, a, we had a responsibility through our service license to um, enhance digital literacy around Scotland. We thought, well, there's a, there's a group of people up in the, the Highlands and Islands who've, <coughs> who've recently uh, got a grant to connect themselves up to the internet. They all, everyone gets a computer and everyone gets a, a, an internet connection. We thought, brilliant, all of these people suddenly online, what can we do? So back in 2002, it made sense for them to start telling stories about their lives. And they did, and it, the site grew. Lots of people wrote lots of interesting things, sometimes breaking news uh, on their blogs before a, a, a journalist from any organization could get, <coughs> could get up to the, you know, some places that were very difficult to reach. Uh, an awful lot of content stemmed from it. And you know, it, it felt like a very uh, sort of pleasing thing to have done, to have, to have grown people's digital literacy, to make them comfortable with using the web, with using computers and all these things, and giving them an outlet for their stories. What it, you know, as the web developed, as BBC Scotland developed, actually people wanted more functionality from these things than we were able to give them. It was a victim of its own success. And now, the page you see here isn't run by the BBC at all. At the end of the project, we decided, right, it's, gr it's grown bigger than we can manage. We're going to release all the data, let it out to the, the, the people who wanted to continue writing their blogs, of which there were many, can continue doing that. But now they run the entire site themselves. Someone uh, you know, took control of it, designed a, designed a page, and now everyone blogs there comfortably themselves. And it's, it, that's, that's an example, I suppose, of, of the BBC realizing that it can't be everything to everybody, and it's it's much more sensible to say, all right, we were a part of this for a while, but 
we're moving on to other things and so are these other people. So that's it. Ownership, omnipresence <laughs> and openness. Thank you for listening.